I've started using Zed and I love it. The UI interaction is incredible and there's no typing latency. You can feel it with every interaction with this editor. Another indispensable feature of this editor is the integration of AI tools, the so-called agentic editing. This feature is integrated into the editor so organically that using it requires no extra effort. It almost happens by itself. Take a look. For example, I'm writing some code, everything looks normal, but at some point I realize I'm having trouble implementing a particular feature or function and a bit of AI help would be useful. Instead of switching to a browser and describing my problem to ChatGPT there, I simply open an additional panel right inside the editor and ask everything I need directly in the context of my code. Isn't that wonderful? All right, that was a brief demonstration of the capabilities. Now let me walk you through everything step by step from how to set it up correctly to how to use it. But first, let me show you one more thing. It just so happens that a new version of Zed was released, so I can show you the update process. In my opinion, it's done very conveniently. That's why I decided to highlight it. So when a new version comes out, you'll see a subtle notification in the status bar at the bottom, letting you know there's an update available. To get it, you simply need to restart the editor at any time that's convenient for you. No need to do it immediately. You just click on the notification and the editor takes care of everything. It restarts, reopens in the exact same state with the same file as you had before, but now updated to the latest version. At the same time, a separate tab opens with the change lock, where all the new version's changes are described in detail. All right, that was a small detour. Now let's get back to AI. To start working with AI in Zed, You'll first need to go through a few simple setup steps. There's nothing complicated here. I'll show you everything. Open the agent panel. There's a dedicated button for it at the bottom right. Then in the context menu at the top, select settings. All settings are divided into several groups. The first group is general settings. Configure these however you prefer. They only affect the convenience of your interaction with AI. The second group is external agents. Zed automatically checks which agents are installed on your computer and adds them to the list, but you can also add an agent manually if it isn't detected automatically. The third group of settings is the model control process servers. Add whichever ones you need here. I strongly recommend installing Context NX7 so that your LLMs use the documentation for the exact library version that you're using in your project. And finally, the fourth and last group of settings is dedicated to connecting the LLM providers that you want to use. Here you can specify both external services and local ones running on your computer or in your local network. As you can see, I have several external services connected, Google AI and OpenAI, as well as a local one, Ovama. Connecting usually just involves entering the service's API key, since Zed already knows all the other parameters for the most popular providers. However, you could also specify all parameters fully manually if needed. All right, now that we're done with the settings, let's close everything and move on to using AI while writing code. All interaction with AI happens in the right-hand panel, which you've already seen. When you open it, a new thread appears. In other words, a chat. You can create multiple threads, each dedicated to discussing different aspects of your code. At the bottom, you'll see the input field for your request. We'll come back to it later. Just below it, there are several important settings for this thread. In the first dropdown, you can choose the profile under which the LLM will operate. Put simply, this is the set of permissions the AI has when working with your code. There are three default profiles, which are usually enough, but you can also create your own for more fine-grained configuration. I usually use the right profile. It allows the AI not only to read my code, but also to make edits. Don't worry though, it's safe. Before making any changes, the AI will always ask whether you want to apply them. In the next selector, you can choose the specific model that will interact with you in this thread. The list of models depends on the providers we set up earlier. Personally, I mostly use the Google models, but sometimes I pick one of the local ones, for example, when there's no internet access. Finally, we have the prompt input field. Besides simply typing your request, you can do one more important thing here. Provide additional context for the request. This is very useful when you need to point the AI to a specific place in the code or a file you're working on. In fact, you can even specify multiple contexts in a single request, handy when you need to work with several files at once. 
to demonstrate the capabilities of Zed when working with LLMs to assist with coding, I'll show you several key usage scenarios. These are the ways I typically use AI together with Zed in my daily work. The first example is when I need to write a piece of standard code, something straightforward that I know how to write, but I just want to speed up my work and offload routine tasks. I start writing a function, then simply ask the LLM to finish it. To help the model understand where to look and exactly where to make changes, I pass it the context. I just highlight the function that needs to be completed and specify in the request that the context is the highlighted piece of code. Done. The model instantly handles the task. This speed is exactly why I prefer Google's models. As you can see, the suggested changes are nicely highlighted. Red shows what will be removed and green shows what will be added. You can accept the changes or reject them if they don't fit for some reason. After that, you can continue the same thread if you need further edits or start a new one. In this case, I'll continue the thread and ask for more modifications to the function. Perfect. The second example of how I use AI and Z is for refactoring and improving code. Let's take this piece of code, for instance, which is just asking to be rewritten. Again, I highlight it and pass it as the context of my request. Great, the result is practically perfect. The LLM not only rewrote the function, but also explained its changes. Now here I want you to notice how Zed presents all this. The right-hand panel displays a neatly formatted detailed response with the AI's reasoning, while in the editor itself, you can immediately see what the final result will look like and you can approve the changes either from the right panel or directly in the editor. In a similar way, other interaction scenarios with LLMs work as well. For example, you can ask the AI to explain a piece of code that's hard to understand, write tests or documentation for a function, help find a bug, or even add new functionality. The key is to clearly describe what you want to achieve. Well, that's all. As you can see, using AI and Zed while writing code is very simple and convenient. And if you use shortcuts, it's also fast. If anything is still unclear, feel free to leave a comment and I'll do my best to answer everything. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next one. See you soon. Take care.